Welcome to the second video in this series on building an NPM package. If you missed the first one, you can go back and see it in the playlist or link in the description below, but it was on building a simple NPM package. And this one is about building a production ready NPM package. What does that mean? It means we have to have things like tests in place to make sure that they pass before we produce a release. Speaking of a release, we need to have a pipeline and version management to keep track of all that and make sure we're not publishing the same version or the incorrect version than what we planned to do based on the changes that we made to the package. We also need some security checks in there to make sure we're not introducing vulnerabilities so that folks that are consuming this package don't become susceptible to those vulnerabilities as well. So we're going to cover all of that right now. Let's get right into it. Okay. To help speed this up, I already created a repository up on GitHub. That's what I like to use for my source control management system. Uh, I called it demo and modern NPM package, and I initialized it there, cloned it locally or used a GitHub code space and then ran the npm init command in my terminal like that and gave, well, it's already got all that, but you can see I, I renamed it the package JSON in the package JSON file that that generated. I renamed it to have a scoped name with my Clarkio account, the version, a description, the main index.js license and author and all that stuff, which you can change to what you need that to be for your project. The key thing to take away here is to ensure that you change the name to what you need it to be. You can follow along with a demo using your account or your organization name as the scoped package name. In the first video in this series, I had mentioned there's a blog post that you can follow along with, which I have open here. Link will be in the description below for this one as well. What we're going to do differently from the blog post in this video is that we're going to be working with just ECMAScript modules, ESM module format, because at this point now, ECMAScript module format has been natively supported in Node.js, either behind an experimental flag or without since version 12. At this point, we're up to version 22 of Node for their LTS version, which is their long-term support version. Okay. If you're building a new package today, you're going to want to just support ESM anyway. You likely don't have much of a need to be backwards compatible with the common JS module format. So we're going to focus on that in this video and skip through some of the common JS pieces in the blog post. So let's jump into setting up this package now using ESM. All right. The first thing we're going to do is create a TypeScript config file for this. So we're going to create a new file tsconfig.json. And right now I'm just going to paste in what we need. All right. I'm going to step through what's a bit different from the blog post. One is the lib field. We're in here, it's specifying the bundled library declaration files that describe the target runtime environment we want for this package. In this case, the latest and greatest is ES2024 and then DOM if you're supporting this package to run in the client or the browser in this case. Uh, target here, this field is the JavaScript language version for emitted JavaScript and included keep compatibility library declaration. So in this case, we want to target ES2024. Then when it comes to the module field, this is specifying what module code is generated. And so we're going to say node next for that. And then for module resolution, the same thing. And this specifies how TypeScript looks up a file from a given module specifier. After that, most of the stuff is similar other than the file output directory. We're going to have it to just lib and lib types for the declaration directory. And in addition to that, files at the bottom is different where we're just going to point to source index.ts. Again, this differs from the blog post a bit because the blog post has a main TypeScript configuration file like we see here. And then for each module format that we want to support, we extend the base one and add specifics to each one that we're supporting. In this case, the first one we're supporting common JS, and then the second one we're supporting ESM. But at the time, the latest and greatest for that was ES2022. And we are on now ES2024. All right, from there in the blog post, it's going to talk about exports. And we can actually skip that now that we're just focusing on ESM because it will default to whatever is defined in the main field on your package JSON and the types for that. So let's go fix that in our package JSON now. So main is going to be dot slash lib slash index dot JS. And then types, let's add that in there, is going to be dot slash lib dot slash lib slash types slash index dot D dot ts and make sure to add the comma in there after that we need to add the files field in the package json that down here save and the files is pointing to lib any directory below that and then any file within those directories now as you're noticing here our output when we compile and build the package it's going to go into a lib folder which is what we defined out here if you recall Next up, we want to update the scripts that we have here. We're going to get rid of tests. Don't worry. We're going to come back to that. I did mention it. And we're going to say we're going to add clean build 
and prepack. This differs from the scripts in the blog post because we were building, remember, for ESM and CommonJS. Now we're just doing build for ESM. So it greatly simplifies what we have here. We're going to clean, meaning remove everything that's in the lib folder. When we build, we're going to run npm clean and then TypeScript compile based on this configuration file, TS config file, and then prepack we'll get to when we get to packaging and publishing the project. It needs to run the build script. Now we get into some more of the fun here. We're going to talk about setting up and adding tests. What's going to differ from the blog post here is nowadays Node has built-in test capabilities and modules, a test runner, assertion libraries, all that fun stuff where we were normally relying on third-party packages like Mocha or Chai or Jest, we can now get rid of that. So let me show you how to get that set up with the built-in capabilities in Node. Really quick, ever since version 20 of Node.js, the test runner has been in stable or in version 18 or 16.17, you could use it behind an experimental flag, okay? So as long as you're on one of those versions, you can rely on this built-in test runner Otherwise, you can lean on what's described in the blog post about Mocha and Chai to get up, get your test working for the project. All right, back over in our project, we're gonna create the SRC folder. And in there, we're gonna create an index.ts file. And then I'm gonna paste in the sample code that we have for the modern package. Again, very boring here, but we have export hello world function, goodbye function, and then we export those under the default export what those functions are here, okay? Now we have some code to test against. Let's create our tests. To do that, first thing we're gonna do is in the root directory, create a test folder. In the test folder, we're gonna create a new file and the naming convention matters here when using the Node.js test runner. So in the blog post, we talk about calling it index.spec.js or ts, but when it comes to Node.js by default, it will recognize test files based on index.test naming convention. You could use spec if you want and just add that into the configuration or an argument as you run the test runner. But in this case, we're gonna go with the default and give it the extension of TS. All right, let's get our test code in here. I'm gonna paste that in as well. And let's talk through what's happening, what's different from before. Now, the first thing you'll notice is these squiggly lines for these modules I'm importing from, the describe function, the it function, and assert. I'm prefixing those modules with the node colon to indicate that that's a built-in package that we're relying on or module we are relying on. Now, to get the squigglies to go away, if you're running into these with Visual Studio Code or whatever editor you might be using, we need to install the types for node as part of the package. So bring up your terminal, run npm, i hyphen d so that it's a dev dependency it's the shorthand for that just like i is shorthand for install we're going to say et types slash node once that's set up and installed you'll notice the squigglies go away okay now let's talk about what's happening here so one of the things that's different here from in terms of how we assert our tests results is the functions that are available off of the assert module built into node versus what's available from mocha and chai so let me show you the original code from what was used in the blog post to what's now so you can see the difference. So you'll notice that we pull out the assert function from the chai module and in it, it has like helper functions off of it to make sure that the output we see here is object as an example is a function or that this package here has a property that's named hello world and that type of thing. Or the fact that hello world is a function, we wanted to test that. That changes a bit when you're using the built-in tools for Node.js. And the way that changes is they have what's called strict equal and deep strict equal. And the way we handle that, you can see that I'm checking that the type of NPM package is equal to an object. So I assert that there. Or when I wanted to make sure that the NPM package had these properties on it, hello world and goodbye, and that I do that in that way, I say deep strict equal object keys of the NPM package, hello world. So it's a little bit more uh, code that you have to write yourself and be more explicit without these helper functions that kind of name out what it is that you're trying to test for here. I'll have this code updated in the modern NPM package repository for you to check out versus another branch, which will have the old version of the package from when the blog post was originally written. All right, now that we have the code all set up and the tests, we need a way to run the tests. Now, being that we're using TypeScript here as the file extension, we need to use an experimental flag for this. So we're gonna create a test script and in that, we're gonna go and say node experimental strip types, and then dash dash test. What the experimental strip types flag allows us to do is use a TS file here, but treat it as if it was just JavaScript for node to run it. All right, so with that script set up, 
One thing to note also with this is that I am on node version 22.13.1 as of recording this. If you want to use this flag, it's not available in version below that, in version like 20, for instance. So if you're on version 20 of node, you're going to want to remove this flag and then just rename the file to .js instead of .ts and you should be good to go. All right. In any case, let's run NPM test to make sure the tests all run and pass. And we can see this is what the test runner shows for us. We have should be an object and everything's passing. We're good to go. Now we have a package that we can have more confidence in is going to behave the way we expect it to because of the tests we wrote for it. Next up, now that we have our code and our tests ready to go, we need to start adding this into a pipeline that's going to run through all the steps we need to follow before getting to the point of actually publishing the package. In this case, I'm using GitHub as my source control management tool, and I'm going to be using it with GitHub Actions to be the pipeline for my package. So if you'd like to, you can follow along exactly as is here with what I'm going to do, or you can use something like CircleCI or some of the other providers that are out there that offer that pipeline capabilities and follow along with what you're familiar with in that regard. All right, so I'm up in GitHub under my repository here, and I'm going to click on Actions. Then I'm going to skip this and say, set up a workflow myself. I'm going to call it tests.yml right there in that field. And then I'm going to copy and paste what we have from the blog post. So what's happening here is it's going to create a workflow for us that is called tests. It will trigger whenever there's a push to the branch main or a pull request that's happening against the main branch. And then it has jobs that it's going to run. The first job is the build job, which runs on Ubuntu latest as the operating system. Ubuntu latest describes the operating system and context in which this job is going to run. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use the strategy matrix so that we can support multiple versions of node if we like. In this case, I'm going to remove that and we're going to go to just straight to 22.x. After that, we're going to run through the following steps. Now, one of the things that differs a bit besides the node versions is the actions versions that we're using here. So the checkout is actually up to version four now, and we can check into this. I believe this will be up to version four as well. The way we can do that is we can just search for it, search for it on GitHub. We go to action, set up node, and we can see what version they're up to on the right hand side here, version four as well. So, and they'll show you example usage. We say at at v4 so we'll do the same on that one to update that to the latest and greatest with that and then that's it so these steps what's happening it's going to check out your code it's going to set up the node runtime that you want to use the environment to be able to support that based on the matrix node version which is in this case just 22.x and then it's going to run npm ci and npm test so npm ci what does that do well essentially it stands for npm clean install but the idea is you're running a installation similar to npm i but within an environment like a pipeline like this and that's why npm set that up so we're going to use that first to install our dependencies that we need and then run the tests now from there we're all set we can commit these changes to the main branch i'm going to commit them like that and we're good to go now actions will not run them just yet until we push changes to the main branch or make pull requests which we can do next back in visual studio code or my terminal we're going to run git pull to get the latest changes which has that workflow and then we're going to add our changes that we have here i've made here in this project so git add everything git commit hyphen m and i'll just say init for now and then we'll get push those changes to the main branch now we'll see that after that push that the init commit is running the workflow and we can see it running that job the job completed for build version 22. we can even see the result of the test running in this environment now all right so at this point you're probably thinking that's great that we have code to test a package but how do we test actually using the package what's the experience like to do that well there's a number of ways you can do that you can read more about that in the blog post linked in the description below but we're going to follow one of the methods from the blog post which is the npm link method all right so the first thing we need to do to start testing the package is build the package as if we're going to deploy it so we need to run npm run build and boom we ran into an error because i forgot to set up TypeScript as a dependency. So we need to run npm install hyphen D TypeScript. Duh. All right, now we have TypeScript available to us. We can run npm run build, builds the package. And we'll see now we have a lib folder with the output of the built npm package for us. Now we can actually use it. So we're going to say, first of all, make sure you're on the right version of node. In this case, I want to be on version 22.13.1. We're going to run npm npm link cool now we're going to create 
a project that's going to use it so to do that we can a quick way to do that is to create a folder in here and call it testing package let's say okay then in there we're going to create a new file we'll call it index.js uh we'll cd into testing package we're going to npm init hyphen y just to get a package json going and in there we want to tell it that we're going to use esm we're going to say type not common js but module okay now we can do this in a second uh bring back up the terminal clear that now we can say npm link and then the name of the package based on our package json for the package so in this case it's that scoped clarkio demo but whatever it is for you use that use the correct one there we hit enter and now that package has been added and you can see it has a node modules folder in the testing package area and we can start using it in our index.js for that testing project that we're doing here. We're testing the package in this project. So we're gonna say if import <laughs> hello world, that hello world function from that Clarkio, da da da, right? And now we can console.log the output of that function, which will just be a hello world type message. Let's go ahead and try running it. We're in the right one. We say node index.js and bam, it is working. Woo, hello world. For my example, modern NPM package. And that is one of the many ways you can test out actually utilizing and consuming the package that you created in a sample project. Again, make sure not to you know, deploy. You can get rid of this, delete this, or have a separate folder outside of your project to do more of that testing locally. All right, this video is getting pretty long as it is. So we're gonna pause here and do the rest of it in the next video and do the security checks and version management and publishing in the next video. So stay tuned for that. When that comes out, it'll be in the playlist and linked in the description below. That does it for this video. I hope you got value out of it. And if you did, be sure to like it down below and share with someone who could put it to use. And if you made it this far, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on upcoming videos. Thanks for watching and happy safe coding everyone.